If you could travel within a crystalline solid, you would see the particles, atoms, ions, or molecules arranged in a regular array. Here, the spaces are greatly exaggerated, but in reality, the particles are packed close together. The unit cell of a crystal structure is the smallest portion that defines the structure. Stacking unit cells next to each other in all three directions gives the structure. Many elements and simple compounds have unit cells from the cubic crystal system. Let's examine the three types of cubic unit cells. All cubic unit cells have particles at the corners of a cube. The simple or primitive cubic unit cell has particles at the corners only. In reality, the particles lie as close to each other as possible. Note that the particles touch along the cube edges, but not along a diagonal in the face or along a diagonal through the body. By slicing away parts that belong to neighboring unit cells, we see that the actual unit cell consists of portions of the particles. When the cells pack next to each other, in all three dimensions, we obtain the crystal. If we fade the others out, you can see the original group of eight particles within the array and the unit cell within that group. We find the number of particles in one unit cell by combining all the particles' portions. In the simple cubic unit cell, eight corners, each of which is one-eighth of a particle, combine to give one particle. A key feature of a crystal structure is its coordination number the number of the nearest neighbors surrounding each particle. In a simple cubic array, any given particle has a neighboring particle above, below, to the right, to the left, in front, and in back of it for a total of six nearest neighbors. The body-centered cubic unit cell has a particle at each corner and one in the center, which is colored pink to make it easier to see. With full-size spheres, you can see that the particles don't touch along the edges of the cube, but each corner particle does touch the one in the center. The actual unit cell consists of portions of the corner particles and the whole one in the center. Eight-eighths give one particle, and the one in the center gives another for a total of two particles. In this tiny portion of a body-centered cubic array, you can see that any given particle has four nearest neighbors above and four below for a total of eight nearest neighbors. The face-centered cubic unit cell has a particle at each corner and in each face, which are colored yellow here, but none in the center. The corner particles don't touch each other but each corner does touch a particle in the face, and those in the faces touch each other as well. The actual unit cell consists of portions of particles at the corners and in the faces. Eight-eighths at the corners gives one particle, and half a particle in each of six faces gives three more, for a total of four particles. In this tiny portion of a face-centered cubic array, notice that a given particle has four nearest neighbors around it, four more above and four more below for a total of 12 nearest neighbors. Stacking spheres shows how the three cubic unit cells arise. Arrange a layer of spheres in horizontal and vertical rows. Note the large diamond-shaped space among the particles. Placing the next layer directly over the first gives a structure based on the simple cubic unit cell. Those larger spaces mean an inefficient use of space. In fact, only 52% of the available volume is actually occupied by spheres. Because of this inefficiency, the simple cubic unit cell is seen rarely in nature. A more efficient stacking occurs if we place the second layer over the spaces formed by the first layer and the third layer over the spaces formed by the second. That simple change leads to 68% of the available volume occupied by the spheres and a structure based on the body-centered cubic unit cell. Many metals, including all the alkali metals, adopt this arrangement. 
For the most efficient stacking, shift every other row in the first layer so the large diamond-shaped spaces become smaller triangular spaces and place the second layer over them. Then the third layer goes over the holes visible through the first and second layers. In this arrangement, called cubic closest packing, spheres occupy 74% of the volume. Note that it is based on the face-centered cubic unit cell. Many elements, covalent compounds, and, as you'll see in the next two examples, ionic compounds adopt cubic closest packing. Sodium chloride adopts the sodium chloride, or rock salt, structure, as do many other alkali, halides, alkaline earth oxides and sulfides, and other ionic compounds. Picture separate face-centered cubic arrays of chloride ions and sodium ions as they approach and interpenetrate each other. The smaller sodium ions fit in the holes between the larger chloride ions and the NaCl unit cell. Zinc sulfide adopts the zinc blend structure, as do the copper-1 halides and several other compounds. If face-centered cubic arrays of zinc ions and sulfide ions approach and interpenetrate slightly offset from each other, each ion becomes surrounded tetrahedrally by four of the other ions. Note the blinking zinc ion and the four sulfides. You can see the relative positions in this slightly expanded view of the zinc blend unit cell.